responsibility on the streets and it's begging. I'm thinking you've got a good brain. You're always thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For close to seven years, I've been a journalist reporting on issues of national concern. When I joined JHR two years ago, not only did I realize the need for responsible journalism, but also was empowered as a local reporter to reveal the systematic human rights abuses the in my community. committed in Sierra Leone and the genocide of Rwanda. I've witnessed the humanitarian crisis in Somalia and the atrocities caused in the Darfur region of Sudan. My name is Jefferson Saki. As a news editor and freelance broadcast journalist in West Africa, I assign stories for evening newscasts to various news houses. A few years ago, I was trained by a group of Canadian volunteers who worked in Ghana with Journalists for Human Rights. One of the main things that GHR inspired in me was the essence and the necessity to move out as a journalist, not just report on the issues, but also bring out the human rights issues, the very ordinary things that is actually affecting the very ordinary Ghanaian and it really went out and went down well with people and most of the stories that we were actually encouraged to do were stories that would not at the end of the day just help the individual but also go a very long way to help the whole community and society. While working one-on-one -on -one with the media trainers, not only did I learn interviews and reporting techniques but also the importance of getting information on human rights issues on the airwaves. I was actually encouraged by GHR to do a particular story in Liberia and that tells me, for example, that the training that I had from GHR did not only influence my country, Ghana, but went all the way beyond the borders of my country into Liberia uh, to the capital Monrovia, Lower Maghribi to be precise, where I did a story on a family of 25 sharing one bedroom and um, sharing two cups of rice for that whole family. This is a risk that the people of Pio Town find themselves in. This is the water that they drink every single day when they wake up. The kind of diseases and microorganisms that exist in this water is very surprising. Any animal at all can come in and swim and at the end of the day the little kids come in here to fetch this particular water to drink. I later realized that this source of water, muddied with all kinds of organisms and dead weeds, is the reason why some of the children had developed infestations on their feet, similar to guinea worm. Um, it, it was after the Liberian Civil War, elections was actually about to take place, and the international community really needed or wanted to know exactly the sufferings of the people of Liberia. And some of the things that we were able to reveal the human rights issues in that particular country went down well. It did not just end there. The Liberian president, Ellen Johnson said, who was then the presidential candidate, um, also heard about it. And it, it even gave me the opportunity also to meet the president-to-be of Liberia, to tell her about the human rights issues in her country, the country that she wants to lead. I give all credit to Journalists for Human Rights for instilling this passion in me to tell these stories. Hello, I'm Jefferson Saki and this is International Assignment. Today, I credit this training from GHR as a reason why I'm the host of GS International Assignment, one of West Africa's biggest weekly talk shows on human rights issues. With this great training from GHR, I have my own blog where I share human rights stories with an international audience. I consider myself as an individual who embodies the spirit of journalists for human rights. Thank you, GHR.